Hey Composer, Zach Heidi here, hope you're all doing well, and I am extremely excited about today's video, which is an ample sound review. Now I've done a couple for them in the past, you've probably seen them, a lot of their uh, Chinese wind instruments, and today it's really, really exciting for me to be able to review their new Air Who. I've been in the market for a good Air Who forever, I have a couple, and they just don't quite meet my needs the way I want them to, and I think this is gonna be the one. I think this is the one I'm gonna use for a long time to come, so I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoyed this VST review, you can leave a like and subscribe for more, and I do weekly videos um, doing like composition breakdowns and how to compose music like other composers. Okay, so here is the UI. I've talked about the UI before, I'll give a brief rundown in a second, but first let's just hear how this actually sounds right out of the box. <laughs> like, I mean, that's just crazy. It's ridiculously good sounding. Uh, the EQ balance, I'm really happy with. A lot of Air Who's I've played in the past, they just don't quite sound right. A little, They sound a little boxy, and this one just, I think, really nails it. Um, also, incredibly responsive, which is a staple of Ample Sound stuff. You can listen. I, I mean, it's just like, I can play ornamentation immediately. <laughs> But also extremely expressive if I use vibrato or use some of the uh, portamentos that are triggered by low velocities. So, I mean, that just meets all my needs immediately, and that's just the default. But there's tons of customization and ornamentation and different key strokes, so let's get into those. So our standard one that we have here is just our standard sustain, and it's triggered as legato, although you can change that if you'd want to. Um, next up, we're going to have our staccatos. And some of these are triggered, uh, you actually have to hold to keep it triggered, and it'll resert, revert back to the sustain if you don't have it held. So you might have to hold the key switch to trigger it, so. That's me letting go. Staccato. Next up we have ricochet. Kind of nice. I don't think it's tempo synced. So you might have to time stretch that if you'd like to, um, but still a cool effect. Next we have pizzicato. I really like the way that sounds. Very cool. Okay. Next we have whispering. It's just kind of like a, a, a certain type of sustained effect. You can hear it very quietly. Okay, sighing, which is just the initial attack of the whispering, crying, very cool. And you could go from that then right into. That's gonna be an attack one, so it won't trigger right when you're doing your sustains. But as an attack, it will. Next up we have horse, not horse like the animal, but horse like your throat. Kind of more of a lead in swell. We have grace tremolo, very useful. And it's only gonna work for the initial attack again. And then from there on, it's just normal tremolo. Okay, then we have portato. Kind of nice swells. We have diminuendo. Attack and decay. We have sforzando, which is the opposite, more or less. And then a little swell. Next up, we have expressive, which are another, another forms of sustains here. So you have so much variety in here in what you can play with. Vibrato. I prefer to have vibrato triggered uh, with the mod wheel. Because I just find there's a little bit more control there, but um, to each their own. Trills. And it looks like, depending on the velocity, you can get kind of more attack. So. That's a cool little trick there. Uh, Morden, which is just an ornamentation again.
And this is another one where actually if you're holding a note already and you do the keystroke, it'll trigger the Morden. Kind of cool. Okay, uh, inverted Morton, so the opposite way. Super cool. Uh, double Morton. Okay, full slides up. That's classic. Uh, then we have full slide down. Now, I don't know if these are triggered. They are indeed triggered, even if you're sustaining. Very cool. Okay, uh, slide in. And if you press it afterwards, it's an out. So you can do in or out. So press it. That's just <laughs> so good. Uh, and then we have slide in above, so the opposite way. That's another really cool sound, kind of unique. Love that. Um, and then portamento, which is just the, the slow gliding. Again, I prefer to have that triggered actually with just the velocity. But that's just me. And then lastly, um, oh, we have virtual portamento, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't love this, but I see why they did it. So it's a slightly different sound, it's artificially created, um, but it can be useful if maybe the portamento isn't quite meeting your needs, and there's probably some customization within there. Lastly, we have licks, which is a really cool feature that um, I use pretty frequently, actually, with the other wind instruments, and that is just a bunch of pre-recorded um, riffs from an air hoop. Okay, here's one. Another one. There's all sorts. And I think even velocity triggers different ones. Maybe not on this one. In the winds one, they're triggered by velocity, but it looks like these, they just have them mapped out to the keyboard. Um, and then this last thing is just basically to stop if you're... Um, kind of stuck on a, a VST and you're having issues, that'll just stop all the sound. So you got a ton to work with in there, um, and it's very playable. I've always used these things um, with ample sound right on the go as I'm performing, which is, you know, the way I like to compose. Um, you have some other settings here, basically for mic positionings, which you can change. Um, the presets will also kind of feature those, so we'll get into that a little bit more there. And then lastly, we have um, some controls over here to basically uh, change parameters on how these things work. So we have polyphonic mode, which is basically just as it sounds. If you want everything playing uh, non-legato. Um, you can also change uh, the legato mode, the type of mode. So this will change whether you have portamento triggered or not. Um, you also have a mode over here uh, that's for the finger position. I haven't played that too much, um, but you get a slightly different sound depending on where on the air who you're playing, similar to a violin or another stringed instrument. Um, and then lastly, over here, we have a sample loop. So you'll basically have uh, these samples loop uh, automatically. So in some of these samples, you have an attack uh, and it's just like a pre-recorded sample that plays through. With the loop on, that won't happen. It'll automatically create a loop in there. Um, might not sound quite as realistic, but you know it helps you if you need to sustain. Okay, so now there's other features inside of Amplesound's um, UI, which are pretty useful and interesting. You have EQs built in here. They sound really good. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate those. I really like the way their UIs look and sound. You have some echoes. Really nice. Um, you also have reverb over here. Which I always thought they sounded really good. Um, and then the other thing you could do is you could just have them work for the presets, which is what I typically do because the presets are so well laid out. Um, so that was contemplating the moon. Now let's check out some of the other ones. We have uh, our default ones here, the default. Okay. 
okay? There's some very different sounding ones if we do the like ambience, for example. More just as a pad. We have the bright air hoop. Real bright. Um, you could bypass all effects if you wanted to, and that just gets you like the raw sound. Memories of an old friend. Okay, soft ensemble, kind of an interesting one. It's like the pad, but it has a bit more vibrato to it. And there's a ton you can work with. Like, I think my personal favorite is Contemplating the Moon. I really, really like that one. Um, something about it just nice and crisp sounding, but has a nice reverb tail to it. And I think there's a little echo built in there, which I really personally like. The last thing I just want to point out is just how responsive this is, because this, for me, is a huge selling point of ample sound. Um, so if we play to click, okay, and then I actually quantize this, so I'll push it a little forward. You'll be able to see. I mean, you don't even need any pre-delay on this at all. Normally with a lot of instruments, I'll have to put on some sort of a track pre-delay basically to compensate for the legato. Now, if you're doing, of course, something where you have a lot of those portamentos, we'll see how that would work. So those are supposed to be quarter notes. Uh, but of course, for the portamento, for it to be triggered, we're gonna have to pull those backwards, so. Not by too much, but we'd obviously just pull these back a little bit. And if you have a wider interval like this, you may have to pull this back a little farther to compensate. But my main selling point, the thing that I think is incredible, is that this has virtually no latency at all to it. So it's very playable. I am just so excited to use this inside my music. And you'll definitely hear it because I've been writing a lot of additional music for Kung Fu Panda. So that's definitely going to be in the series, which is going to be awesome. So thanks again, Ample Sound, for sending me this. It's always a pleasure working with you. Hope you all enjoy this air hoop. If you're interested in checking it out, I've got that linked in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.